So this is geometric and kinematic based controllers. Next, we have something called as we can have uh, controllers which are based on the vehicle model or the dynamic properties of the vehicle. So the first thing would be to include dynamic properties of the vehicle in the control law. And what I mean by dynamic properties are you include the uh, yaw rate. So that basically explains how fast the vehicle is rotating around its axis. You look at the lateral dynamics. So lateral acceleration, you look at the side slip angle of the vehicle and also the tires and use those to come up with control actions. And also you can, and I don't go into this topic in too much detail now, but you can include uh, linear or non-linear tire characteristics and see how uh, they can be used for the control action. And using these uh, model-based or uh, dynamic properties or behavior of the vehicle, you can, there are a plethora of techniques available. Uh, you can use PID-based controllers, optimal controllers, adaptive controllers, LQR, MPC, etc. As an example here, I have put uh, a technique with uh, an MPC based approach for tracking a reference path. And you can see that it comes up with this uh, black crosses, which are the path right in front of it that it wants to track. And then it tries to follow the reference. So moving ahead to summarize the path tracking controllers, what we see is that uh, again, there are, is there needs to be a trade-off and cost benefit analysis of the different techniques. Uh, and so looking at the geometric and kinematic controllers, they are relatively easy to implement. And many of them have been experimentally validated host of driving conditions. So something as, uh, uh, as elegant as a Stanley controller has been uh, used quite often and it has been shown to work, work quite, quite, quite well. Uh, but again, the issues uh, with these controllers are that the vehicle dynamics are not uh, considered and the performance of the tracking controllers uh, reduces a lot when the velocity of the vehicle changes. So if you have a control law that is designed for, let's say, traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, the controller performance goes down very quickly once the vehicle speed reduces. So they are not very robust to these changes. Moving to model-based and dynamic techniques, the advantages are they look at the vehicle entire dynamics, so they most accurately consider the uh, behavior of the system that needs to be controlled, so they come up with more realistic steering angles. But again, the performance is highly dependent on, on the accuracy of the model, so both the tire and the vehicle. And uh, very often the optimization based techniques such as MPC have quite high computational requirements that might not be suitable for uh, the application of tracking controllers. So once, so moving ahead on the autonomy stack from the tracking controllers, basically we can come up with steering angles and uh, acceleration and braking profiles that the vehicle needs to actually apply to accurately follow a path. Uh, and all this while, how this happening was, this is kind of, this tracking controller is fitted onto existing vehicle architecture. So you already have a steering angle or acceleration pedal, and you try to have a robotic arm that steers the acceleration or steering wheel, or you have motors within the steering wheel. However, if you have a level five autonomous vehicle, there is actually no need for uh, steering wheels or actual acceleration brake pedals. And that also opens up the opportunity of uh, updating the control architectures for the actual actuation level controllers, and they can use next generation of actuation systems. So one of them could be something called as a uh, steered by wire, where on the left, you have a conventional vehicle. So you have the steering wheel and there's an actu actual mechanical linkage from the steering wheel all the way to the wheels. And based on how much the steering and wheel turns, there's a gear here that kind of translates this rotational motion into linear motion. However, if we have an autonomous vehicle, there's actually no need for a steering wheel or a mechanical linkage. So all of this mechanical linkage can be removed and you can have electric motors residing on the axle and they can be used for uh, performing the steering action. And that would be a steer by wire system. Uh, and thus this brings uh, the opportunity for designing new controllers for the actuators of the vehicle. Similarly, if you have an autonomous vehicle, you might not really require a brake pedal that has a mechanical connection from the pedal all the way to the wheel. 
So what you could have is something like, and this is a very uh, big topic of development and research is you could have brake calipers, which motors mounted on the calipers themselves to have to perform the braking action. So you don't have any uh, hydraulic systems, but just electric motors on the brakes that are used for braking. So again, brake by wire systems, they bring advantages of very high performance and uh, reduced failure because there are no me mechanical connections. And finally, with uh, this advent of electric vehicles and especially uh, electric vehicle on electric motors on each axle, etc. There is also these uh, actuation techniques, something called, uh, for example, something called as a torque vectoring. So you can apply different torques on each wheel of the vehicle and you can get different characteristics. So you can not only use the steering wheel to make the vehicle turn, but you can make the vehicle turn based on how much torque you apply on individual wheels. Uh, and that's also a very important way of, uh, way of actuation for the next generation of vehicles. So this also brings new uh, avenues for development for uh, autonomous vehicles. So to summarize the entire vehicle autonomy stack, I talked about sensing, perception, planning, control, and actuation, and how that actually translates into a architecture that looks something like this on the right. So you have the intelligent vehicle autonomy stack. So here on the top, you have the sensors and the, they feed information into a localization and perception based layer, which comes up with situational awareness for the vehicle based on the perception uh, and the information from the localization and perception that feeds into a planning and control a module that uses this information to come up with reference trajectories, environmental prediction, and then use some kind of controller to come up with reference paths. And once these reference paths are known, they are passed onto the steering interfaces and acceleration interfaces to actually control the vehicle. And that kind of completes the autonomy stack for the intelligent next generation vehicle. So yeah, that was more or less a very brief and high level uh, introduction to the vehicle autonomy stack. Uh, moving on, what I'll discuss uh, briefly is some of the career prospects that uh, that uh, this uh, new uh, domain brings in. Uh, and that, that could be quite beneficial. Please do bear in mind that uh, the uh, career prospects I or the list of careers I talk about is not an exhaustive list. This is just to give you a generic idea. And so if you find a certain domain interesting, you can uh, look into it a bit more to see what kind of uh, career options you would like to explore. So first we can look at the uh, vehicle sensing system. So we already see that uh, just talking. Uh, so on the right, you have an architecture for a LIDAR system that might be mounted on a vehicle. And you already see just on the sensing level itself, it's a very, very complex system. So it has all the characters uh, uh, components. So there's the hardware component, there is the software component, signal processing, etc. Uh, so there are uh, consideration things that you need to consider are what are the power characteristics of the sensor uh, where do you store this memory uh, how does this sensor interface with the vehicle what kind of signal processing and data processing needs to be performed very important for lidars where you generate a lot of data then actual the hardware layer so how the actual hardware level or the analog system uh, signals are generated the actually mechanical aspects of the uh, sensor so the mounts the actual materials and then the diagnostics and monitoring so this is just an architecture for a lidar based sensor you can have similar architectures for radar camera etc so some opportunities that you one can have in a vehicle sensing domain would be systems engineers for a lidar based systems you can have automotive system of on chip engineers who focus on sensor processing and then if a vehicle has a lot of different kind of sensors a sensor fusion engineer would be a career option where the main challenge or task would be to design algorithms that fuse this information from different sensors so that it can be passed on to the vehicle perception unit. Some good skill sets or beneficial skill sets would be to have a strong background in signal processing, have good uh, programming skills in C, C++, Python, MATLAB, etc. Be well versed in techniques such as uh, Kalman filtering, uh, particle filtering, 
and basically be well versed with data data processing techniques again this is not a, an exhaustive skill set but just some general pointers that, that, that can be helpful uh, moving on to perception so for example here you have the sensing system and the sensor does its stuff and sends the information so the camera might look at uh, see something like this an infrared camera might look at something like this if it's raining or in some other environmental conditions it might see something like this and all of this has to be combined to come up with a perception of the uh, actual environment so some of the opportunities that you can have in this domain is to work in mapping and localization so there are companies you can just take the name of the common mapping or maps that you use on your uh, smartphones and these companies actually also perform mapping and localization uh, functions so they basically map out the entire road network with very high degree of accuracy and this is used by the autonomous vehicle that could be one exciting or interesting uh, opportunity L uh, looking at perception algorithm engineer so that would be an uh, en engineering discipline where you kind of use all of this information from a camera from a lidar a radar etc and design algorithms for the vehicle's perception again a sensor fusion engineer it's kind of an overlap with the uh, sensing block but you can work in, in interdisciplinary uh, fields and something that is quite important i would say in the current recent developments would be something like a machine learning engineer uh, very important for the perception because you have uh, like so much data being generated from uh, lidar systems and camera systems that uh, anyone who has the knowledge or capabilities to uh, develop good ai based models uh, can actually come up with very good algorithms for uh, motion prediction or object detection etc so some useful skills to have in this uh, domain would be to be aware of with of middleware systems like ross which is robot operating system etc there are resources available online for that have good programming skills, of course, MATLAB, Python, JavaScript, etc. Uh, and also looking at the data-driven techniques, I would say it's uh, quite important to be well-versed with statistics, probability theory, machine learning, reinforcement learning, etc. Uh, moving to path planning, again, the opportunities, uh, there are many, many opportunities. So one of the most obvious one would be like motion planning and control engineer. Uh, and as the name suggests, the job would be or the task would be to come up with uh, motion uh, algorithms that com uh, that compute paths for a vehicle so just a screenshot here so you have all these obstacles and it has to and it has come up with this blue path to actually uh, navigate through this intersection similarly here you see the uh, vehicle trying to follow another vehicle on a curved highway segment and you see that if it carried on straight it would go hit the barrier so a motion planning algorithm would basically come up with this path and basically this uh, the job would basically or the task would basically involve coming up with algorithms that can be used to perform such activities so again good upon it opportunities would be motion planning and control engineer vehicle dynamics and control engineer or working on simulation software so design these algorithms in very high fidelity simulation environments testing them making sure they are robust again important skill set would be middleware systems good skills in programming matlab python etc uh, also very important uh, considering uh, mostly uh, constraint optimization based techniques would be statistics, probability, uh, machine learning, etc. And also, I would say a good knowledge of vehicle dynamics, the ISO standards for safety, uh, etc. And they can be quite beneficial for, uh, uh, for uh, these kind of opportunities. Uh, moving ahead, I'm not explaining into the actuation system uh, controller because that's nothing new in that. It's basically the same in terms of any control engineer job in an automotive or non-automotive field. But I'll just combine that with integration and testing. So that would be now you have this uh, very complex autonomy stack. So opportunities would be in the systems integration engineer. So tasks based on integrating all of these systems testing them in high fidelity uh, vehicle simulators that you see here or in mock-up cities where you can test your uh, algorithms and different aspects of autonomy testing and validation engineers so someone actually involved with the hardware testing of the algorithms uh, creating test reports doing subjective and objective analysis 
vehicle dynamics engineer control engineer harness engineer these are like quite common roles that one can look into in terms of integration testing and vehicle dynamics engineer and important skills to have in this uh, domain i would say is to have good knowledge of vehicle and tire dynamics uh, control systems vehicle testing and homologation would be a good skill set to have and again good knowledge of vehicle dynamics iso 26262 the different testing procedures Uh, and the different standards that are used for uh, homologation will be co- quite useful in terms of as a valuable skill set uh, in this domain so with this i hope i have given you a brief introduction into the different aspects of vehicle autonomy and some career prospects that you can consider based on your skill set so with that i come to an end of my presentation thank you everyone for your uh, patience thank you